Happy Independence Day. I didn't plan to make this video on Independence Day here in the United States. This is when, in 1776, we gained our independence from England, but it actually works out to a pretty nice segue to today's topic, and that is how, in 2024, Black Magic killed Red. Now, I know those are fighting words for some of you, and I know others of you will rejoice when hearing something like that because you've always thought Red overrated. The fact of it is, in broad strokes, that both Red and Black Magic Design are not only market disruptors, but are equally as disparaged, albeit from two opposite ends of the media world. The folks who have never been able to afford Red cameras scoff at the price tags of Red cameras and say silly things like, my mirrorless whatever can turn out identical images because I know how to grade and blah blah. And on the other end, working pros familiar with high-end cine cameras scoff at Blackmagic cameras because they're plasticky and Australian. So here's my take. As someone who is completely brand agnostic, as someone who has owned and used for paid work many cameras from most manufacturers, including several from Red and Blackmagic, on why in 2024, Black Magic has killed Red. This is my opinion, but an opinion which has come after some thought and has been informed by years of experience. I know this is divisive, and I would love to engage all of you in the comments. I only ask that you keep it civil and keep it thoughtful. So, here we go. There are three points I want to make about this. And we're going to take them in opposite order, from least to most important, on how Black Magic has killed Red in 2024. Number three is obvious if you haven't been living under a rock of late. In early 2024, Red Digital Cinema was wholly acquired by Nikon. This is the least important of what we're going to be talking about here, but it does set the stage for future points. Red is and always has been a company that's easy to love, created by the same guy who created Oakley sunglasses, Jim Jennard, as a way to produce better marketing for his eyewear at the time. Over the years and countless millions of dollars later, courtesy of selling Oakley to Luxottica, red cameras became insane powerhouses, rivaling in most ways any other camera in the world on the biggest productions, but Red themselves remained a small California company, headed up by an eccentric president in Jared Land and full of surf bros and punk rockers. Now, if you're American, like I am, as fireworks go off in the background, it's <laughs> very coincidentally, that's really easy to root for, and a lot of us did. We want that company to do well. So when Red earlier this year was sold to Nikon, there was rightfully some concern about what Red was going to look like going forward. Concern enough that longtime Red shooters, and I know this is a fact because aside from myself, I know several other, mostly other commercial photographers who have gone down the same thought process, we started to kind of war game in our head and exit from Red if we needed to. So we would think like, okay, what kind of work am I shooting right now? What's the feature set critical to this? What does the deliverable have to be? And are there any approximates to red cameras coming from manufacturers who have a more clear corporate direction? Because as awesome as whatever tool that you have might be, if it all of a sudden stops being supported, right? So number two, and, and this might actually be the, the most important thing. It's, it's a toss-up between this and number one I had to choose. And, and we'll get into that. Um, I can speak for the commercial media space because that's who I am. And, and that's who most of my friends in this conversation are. The landscape has changed, and not in a lucrative way for us. Not with the gear involved anyway, see? Every time there's a new iPhone out, 
there's always the chatter about how this time the camera's going to be so good as to put us, working pros, out of work. Now, while that hasn't come to fruition exactly, we are getting closer to that. How do I know? Because the professionals are using iPhones for ENG, event coverage, etc. Like, no joke. You will see a lot of people holding up iPhones at these different things. So if it's a good enough tool quality-wise for, for us to use, but it's designed to be easy and intuitive for anybody to use, right? But that, that angle of it's another conversation for another video. So, okay, you say, uh, awesome. But what does any of this have to do with Black Magic and Red? Simply this. The more you spend on a current model cinema camera today, with the way things are going, the bigger the bag you're going to get caught holding long term, right? Ask anyone who owns a DSMC or owned a DSMC2 platform red, as I did, how that worked out for them. When the smaller, cheaper DSMC3 red cameras came out, I know guys who bought just a couple years ago monsters at 50,000 plus who could now sell them for what? I mean, a quarter of that, if they're lucky. And we're going to bring it all together here to the most important point. Point number one on how in 2024 Black Magic has killed Red. Simply put, Black Magic has been moving forward quickly as Red has become quite uncertain. Now, look, I'm not suggesting that a Black Magic anything is better than a Red anything because 99% of the time they aren't. But how much in this climate does that matter? If I can buy three to one, hell, five to one, black magic cameras for every red camera I could buy, and if the feature set, and yes, even the deliverable image is very close for anything but the highest end narrative or commercial work, why would I not do that? This has all been made possible this year by a couple key moves by Blackmagic. The first was, in a brilliant but almost certainly coincidental stroke of timing by Blackmagic, the camera releases at NAB on the eve, like literally the eve, of the deal between Red and Nikon consummating leaving red users everywhere contemplating an exit strategy if needed, Blackmagic released the Pixis and the 12K full frame, Ursa. Furthermore, unlike the plastic football pocket cams, these new ones are great client-facing cameras. They look more professional, while still being only a fraction of the red pricing, giving us the option of continuing the same work but having much less invested in gear and less of a risk of holding that bag as the bids on jobs get more competitive, i.e. The, the race to the bottom pricing, right? And as the consumer tech evolves at a much more rapid pace. Then there was the final nail in the coffin, the Black Magic Cinema 6K. Now, while this is a plastic football, it got put on sale for nearly half price, just 1500 bucks. And you know what that did? That made a lot of these commercial shooters go out and buy one, just as a, hell, why not? It's cheap. Let's check it out. And between myself, a lot of the people who I know, and judging by a lot of the content I've been seeing lately, we're impressed Impressed enough, taken together with those other points and reasons, to have moved over. Believe it. But let me know what you think down in the comments. Like I said, please be civil. Let's have a good conversation about this. And I'll see you down there. Peace. Peace.